Do you know what's the worst catfishing of all time? Showing someone A-level biology query boundaries and making them believe that A-level biology is easy. 68% for an A-star, surely this must be easy. You might compare the grade boundaries to chemistry or physics and think, easy A-star in the bag. Well, that's what I used to think. But you may have realized by now that it doesn't work like this. So in this video, I'm going to be going through the tips which helped me get an A-star in A-level biology and can help you get the top grades you would like. So let's get straight into it. My first tip is make sure that you're really good with your recall. You should know the processes and the definitions really well. You can pick up 30 to 35% of your marks from A01, which is basically just your recall. You shouldn't be losing these marks. And these marks are quite easy to get if you know your stuff. For example, a five mark question in 2020 was just simply asking to describe transcription. And guess what? It was followed by a six mark after that to describe translation. And from the mark schemes, nothing is tricky. Now, it might just be a one marker, such as what is meant by a genome, but these marks will add up. It doesn't get any simpler than that. And if you know your content, you should be absolutely smashing these questions so that you can spend more time on the harder application and the harder evaluate questions. What a lot of students struggle with is just revising, just making notes. What I've seen students do is literally copy down every single bit from the textbooks or whatever resource they're using into their origin card. But personally, I do not support that. You won't be gaining much from that. And because there's so much content for biology, it would be consuming a lot of your time and you wouldn't have time to do anything else. So what I would do is I would get the notes in front of me, which the college provided, along with any of the resources that I would be using. And then I would just open one note and copy the exam board specification for that topic. So I would always be checking with the specification to make sure that I wasn't missing out anything and I wasn't writing anything unnecessary and then I would make my own condensed note. But it was crucial that I actually understood the content. If not, then I would ask a friend or just watch a quick YouTube video on it. Miss Estrich is good if you want an in-depth understanding, but it will take longer to get through the whole topic. For A-level biology help, she has everything about the topic in one video, or if you want the perfect videos, then head over to Townsville Ahmed's biology videos. He goes through everything on the spec for that topic. And by the way, that's me. What I would recommend is to be friends with A-level biology. No, what I would actually recommend is to be friends with people who are doing A-level biology if you aren't already. They are cool. They do A-level biology. After the end of the lesson, during your study periods or at the end of the day, get together. This could be online and go through what you've learned in that day. You teach them and let them teach you make sure you understand the content as you're going through it in lessons. Do not, do not fall behind. It becomes very difficult to catch up. One thing I'm so, so glad I did was preparing for next lesson. Make sure when you're walking into the lesson, you have some knowledge about what you'll be learning or the new terminology and the new processes can really, really throw you off. This shouldn't take more than 20 minutes and just reading over your textbook and just watching a quick YouTube video could be so useful you'll be able to understand and retain more information and you'll just feel more engaged overall. Trust me, this makes your lessons much more useful and much more fun. Now for A-level biology exam questions, get into the habit of writing more than what is being asked for. As you know, the mark scheme is horrendous. What may seem like a mark to you and what is a mark may not be a mark in the mark scheme. So write extra as you might be able to pick up a mark or two. For example, for describing phagocytosis, in this first question, if you say the pathogen is engulfed, then that's a mark. But in the second example, this will not be a mark. So for the second question, instead of writing just three points and stopping, I would just write the whole process of phagocytosis as anything could get me the marks. Now, this is the case for every exam question. So just get into the habit of writing everything you know about that question, which is related. Now, you might not be able to do that for every question. For example, in this, in this question, you can only give two answers, uh, but the questions you can do it in, do it. Also, make sure that you're using the keywords or the terminology which is specific to that topic and question. For example, in this question about the non-competitive inhibitor and how that affects the enzyme-controlled rate of reaction, 
Here the use of word complementary is essential as stated by the mark scheme. If you didn't say complementary, then you simply won't get the last mark. Now really pay attention to what the question is asking you, including the command words. The main command words are describe, explain, compare and contrast and evaluate. The rest everyone is fine with. Now starting with a describe question, for a describe question all you have to do is just simply say how something happens, how a process occurs or what is happening if they've given you data and you don't have to give any reasons for it. So for example if I had this graph and they said describe this graph then you can just simply say that as the concentration of the substrate increases, the rate of reaction increases and they're proportional to each other until around 170 uh, concentration of substrate and 25 rate of reaction, then the rate of reaction plateaus after. But if this was an explain question, I would basically describe what is happening first. So what's going on? What's the process occurring? What can I see? And then I would give the reasoning behind for why this is happening. Now going through the same question again, but this time if it was an explain question, so explain the graph this time. So then I would just say as the concentration of substrate increases, the rate of reaction increases because more enzyme substrate complexes form until 170. After that, the graph starts to plateau and because the enzyme starts to saturate and the enzyme concentration becomes a limiting factor now. Now I hope you can see the difference. Now if it was a compare and contrast question, I would highly recommend that you draw a table. It can make life much easier for you. So for example, if it was compare and contrast prokaryotic DNA to eukaryotic DNA, then you can write a whole essay on it. Or you could just draw out a table and write your answer down in a much more organized and a much quicker way. The choice is yours. Now for an evaluate question, you have to consider both sides of the argument. Get really good at picking up small details. If they've given you detail, you will probably be using it. Now, for example, in this question here, we've been told that the scientists infected mouse liver cells. Well, why would they tell us? Why mouse liver cells? If you read in this question, it talks about using the treatment in humans. So you could say that it was investigated in mice, not humans. And that would be a mark. And we're given standard deviations because we must be using them. So you could say that there is a significant difference as standard deviations don't overlap. But what if they did overlap? Well, then you could say that there is no significant difference. So they won't give you anything for nothing. You just have to do lots of questions and then you'll just become more natural over time. And you'll just start to pick patterns and you'll start to get more marks. A really big tip is bullet point every single answer. Use bullet points to answer every single question except the essay. Here you're being asked to describe the structure of DNA. Now you could write a whole amazing essay on it, but it would take so much time. But on the other hand, if you were to just bullet point everything, it'd be much more organized, much quicker, and it would be much easier to get your points across. And do you know what? Examiners prefer it. If you look at the mark scheme, everything is basically in bullet points. And don't just bullet point your answers for the longer questions use it for every single question. Okay, so by this point, you may have realized that even if you know all the content for A-level biology, it is not enough. You have to be doing exam questions, they are crucial. But what is more crucial is doing them in the right way. So I would do the exam questions in a three-step method. So first I would ensure that I was comfortable with all the content for that topic. If not, then I would ask my teachers or my friends or watch a YouTube video on it. Seriously, YouTube is a lifesaver. And then the next step is to start doing the exam questions without any help or without any notes, and then mark them straight after using the official mark scheme provided by the exam board. Uh, it's important to mark them straight after because the question will be fresh in your head and you'll be able to understand the mark scheme more uh, and you'll be able to gain more out of it. See where you've lost the marks and what you may realize is that a lot of the times the same mark points will be repeated. Copy these. Copy these mark points literally word to word and you might want to make Quizlet or you might want to make flashcards out of it. Make sure you learn these mark points really well. Whenever you see a similar question again, the mark points should be jumping up. Now onto resources. Now there are plenty of resources available and you can get a textbook for your specific exam boards to understand the content and to make notes. Personally, I wouldn't use them uh, for exam questions because the mark scheme is not officially from the exam board themselves. 
Also, you can use YouTube, which I would personally highly recommend. Um, for exam questions, physics and math tutor or study mind is amazing. Um, and you'll be able to access the exam questions topic by topic. I will link them in the description below. Now, past papers are also amazing, but you have to be using them in the right way. Don't use them too early. For example, I wouldn't be doing an A-level paper 2 at the end of year 12 because I wouldn't know anything. Also, leave the latest past papers to closer to your exams because they will be good practice. And when you are doing them, do them properly under the right exam conditions. Make sure you have two hours and then do it. And then afterwards, dedicate time to actually properly mark it and see how many marks you got and where you went wrong and where you could improve. Also, note down the scores after marking each past paper and see if you're improving over time. Take your topic test seriously. Prepare for them like your actual exams because they're a really good indication of your strengths and your weaknesses. As you have so many things going on, it's very easy to start forgetting things and falling behind. Therefore, a crucial tip is to stay organized. I would recommend a to-do list which is based on priority and actually follow the list. Uh, take things as you do them because it gives you a sense of achievement no matter how small the thing might be and it just keeps you motivated. Also, organize your notes. You should be able to access them wherever and whenever you need. That's why I really like the idea of having your notes online. And remember, your notes don't need to be perfect. You shouldn't be taking too long making your notes. As long as they have the necessary information, they are good enough. A-level biology is hard, but you can make it a little easier for yourself. I hope this video has been useful. Thanks for watching and good luck.